Hey guys, welcome to another Vegas Pro tutorial from Techtopia. And today I'm going to show you some beginner's uh, techniques for keyframing. I'm going to explain it and just uh, show you the basics of it. I'm not going to go too into depth or like any advanced things or anything. I'm just going to show you the basics so that you can get started and create some cool stuff. So, I'm just going to get right started here. I'll explain it as I go. So I'm in my noise texture category under media generators. Let's just drag something in real quick like soft clouds. Now, you know that once you add some media generators to your timeline, it uh, prompts you to change the color of it and stuff. Like here, I can change the color of the clouds and stuff. And then you can change, you know, like the green and amplitude and all that crap. Well, uh, you can also keyframe all of these options. Now, what keyframing is, is it's kind of like animating, but not like, you know, stop motion animating or like where you're drawing a picture, then you draw a, no a new picture and a bunch, you do that a bunch of times. And when you play it back, it, uh, seems like it's moving. I'm not talking about like that an animating, but uh, you'll see. So here is our keyframes down here. This is where we edit all our keyframes and create new keyframes. And uh, if you don't see your keyframes because it looks like this, uh, to get your keyframes back, just put your mouse on the little bar here. You'll see there's this little bar here. And then if you put your mouse on uh, the bar, your cursor changes to this icon. If you see that icon, click and drag up. And there's your keyframes. So let me just do one example to show you how a keyframe would work. Now this entire white bar represents our entire clip. Not our entire project, but our entire clip. So let me show you. This one uh, puffy clouds or soft clouds or whatever it is, is 10 seconds long, okay? So if I go here and then I'm at my keyframes, I can move this little sliding thing. If I put it to the very end so that I can't move it any farther, that means that my next keyframe will be placed at the 10 second mark. Now if I do anything, change the color, uh, move this progress in degrees all the way up, uh, you'll notice that now there's this new diamond placed there. That diamond is a keyframe. Now there's one keyframe at the beginning. There will always be one keyframe at the beginning of your uh, keyframing timeline. There will always be one by default, but I just put up that new one there and all I did was uh, changed my settings so look let me show you I put my slider at the end see how there's no diamond let's just do anything I'm gonna put progress in degrees to full I'm gonna go up here and change this color to black if we go back down you'll notice now there's a diamond or a keyframe and uh, the distance between the first keyframe and the new keyframe that we created is 10 seconds because this is at the beginning of our keyframe timeline which is the one second mark and this is at the end of our keyframe timeline, which we know is 10 seconds because our clip is 10 seconds long. And if this timeline represents our entire clip and our clip is 10 seconds long, that means that this new keyframe will take 10 seconds to complete. So uh, on the first keyframe, progress in degrees is at uh, nothing. But on the final keyframe, it is at full. So that means in 10 seconds, it will complete. So let's watch the video preview. Let me just uh, fix this. Okay, let's watch. So our clouds are now dancing and uh, having a good time, and they were also changing colors at the same time. And that is a simple keyframe. That was one keyframe that we just created. So as you can see, here's our new keyframe, and it took us 10 seconds for the entire cycle to complete. Now we can uh, click and drag these keyframes around. Let's say if we drop it here at the halfway point. If 10 seconds is our entire clip and we drop it at the halfway point, that means that uh, the keyframe will take 5 seconds to complete. So if we play this back, if all goes right, the keyframe or the entire animation will be a lot faster and it will finish quicker in 5 seconds to be exact. Let's play it back. As you can see, the clouds are now dancing and changing colors is faster than uh, they were before. And it stops at the 5 second mark and it just kind of stays there for uh, the rest of the time. So as you can see, these keyframes are all based on time. If I drop it here, it'll take 10 seconds or the whole length of the clip to finish. If I put it like right here, it's going to go so quickly, you're not even going to be able to understand what's going on. See, that's how uh, you move your keyframes around. So uh, I think it's pretty straightforward from there on. So let's uh, do one more exercise here. I'm going to put that keyframe we created at the five second mark. Then I can uh, put my slider and move it around and I'm going to drop it at the 10 second mark. Now if I put this progress in degrees all the way down and then I change the color from black to hot pink then I put this frequency all the way up this Y all the way up or almost the way up 
offset and I just do all these settings so that I get a new keyframe. <clears throat> if we play it back, this is what's going to happen. The same animation that I already played for you will stop at the 5 second mark and for the remaining 5 seconds it will do a bunch of other crazy crap. So here we go. And there you go, it's doing a bunch of crazy crap now and it's changing color to pink. And that is because of the keyframes. So hopefully by now you understand the basic concept of keyframing. If not, it's okay. Keyframes get extremely easy once you uh, know how to use them. But uh, it's alright if you don't know how to use them, just watch a few more tutorials and just basically try things out for yourself. Like well, this could be you. Okay, I just watched this tutorial. Let's see what it, it can do. So just drag in like anything. Here's microscopic threads. You can change the color. And now let's try the keyframe thing. If I put a keyframe here, and then change the colors of everything. And I put another keyframe here, and I change the color. And I put the progress and degrees up. And I put another keyframe here. You can put as many keyframes as you want on your timeline, by the way. So if you play it back, let's see what we got. Well, <clears throat> it's changing colors. And now it's starting to move. So yeah, you can do like whatever you want really with keyframes. This is how like everything works. And I already said this, but uh, keyframes aren't just with... Uh, you know, noise texture. Uh, if I go to my pan and crop window here, I can also keyframe here. So if I uh, zoom in, put a keyframe at the five second mark and then uh, zoom out, then uh, it'll zoom out from the first keyframe. And then, you know, you can do that with other stuff too. If I go to my text category under media generators and just drag this on a new track and I just call it blah, blah, blah. I can go to placement, have it at the top. See, here's your keyframes again. If I put my keyframe here and then drop it, and then at the same time I have this turned on and you know, all this stuff. So if I play it back, there will be a bunch of stuff going on. And basically, I just created a very simple intro in a matter of minutes, but this is like extremely easy stuff. So, anyways, uh, that is basically it for basic keyframing. Uh, when I do my next keyframing tutorial, I'll show you some hold keyframes, uh, more multiple keyframes, and using keyframes with other forms of media like effects and transitions and stuff. But basically, that's it. It might have sounded complicating, but it's actually not too bad. So basically, after watching this tutorial, it'll help for you to just try and create some stuff on your own. But it's very simple. Just uh, move this slider around, drop it at whatever point you want the keyframe to end, change everything around, and then watch and enjoy. So I uh, hope I answered some of your questions, hope I satisfied you. Uh, I think I'll need to make another keyframing tutorial. But anyways, I uh, hope this helps you out. And anyway, if it does help you, post a comment saying so, that'll help me out. Uh, rate the video, comment on it, subscribe. All that stuff is good for me. So anyways, thanks for watching, have fun, and take care.